If you walk on to most new construction job sites today where trim carpenters are going to town, you're gonna to find that they're cutting their baseboard upside down at the saw and in the vertical position. If you wanna know why that is, why it's better and why it's faster, stay tuned for this video. We're gonna dig into production techniques for baseboard. Now, as we get set up to run production baseboard, we need to decide, are we gonna cut our base vertically or are we gonna cut it on the flat? Are we gonna cut it on the flat like this or are we gonna flip it up and cut it vertically? To cut it vert vertically, you're gonna need a couple things. One is the capacity to do so. I just did a video on why I love the DeWalt DWS 780 miter saw, which is a 12 inch slider. One of those reasons is I have enough, enough height capacity to cut baseboard in the vertical position. One of the key advantages to cutting baseboard vertically is that you get a longer frame of reference if you set up your miter saw station correctly. With these miter saw wings, whenever I set them up, I take my level and I put it on the base of my saw and I ensure that my miter saw wings are running in plane with the base of my miter saw. That means that this is imitating the floor. So whenever I'm making that cut, I know that my baseboard is sitting like it's gonna sit on the floor. And wood is not straight. So if it's got a big cup in it or a dip, I'm gonna get a more accurate cut because my reference line is bigger, it's longer. The disadvantage to cutting on the flat is what happens to my frame of reference. Now my reference is only the length of both sides of the fence on my saw. So I can have an eight foot length of reference to, to get my cut or cutting on the flat, I only have about a 12 inch frame of reference. So if the piece of baseboard has a big crown or dip in it, what's gonna happen if you try and make your cut and you're only registering 12 inches, there's a good chance that that cut is gonna end up being a couple degrees off not going to be 100% accurate. Doesn't mean that this can't be done. I cut baseboard on the flat with the Festool Capexes for years. It works just fine, but this is one of the advantages of cutting vertically. Now, some may argue with this, but for me, the other key reason I like to cut baseboard vertically is because it is easier to move the miter function of the saw quickly and effortlessly as compared to the bevel function, function of the saw where I have to reach around back and adjust that handle back there. As we're cutting our baseboard, we're gonna be putting a lot of 45 degree cuts on our base for the cope, and then you need to quickly be able to switch back to zero, or many of you have told me you like to go uh, a few, negative a few degrees so that your cut is actually at an angle whenever you make the straight cut on your base. And that's just a lot easier to do up here with these controls on the front of the saw versus using the bevel. So we've decided that we wanna cut our baseboard vertically. Now, how are we gonna set up to do that most productively whenever we have to cope one end of the baseboard? For most of us, we're gonna be right-handers. That means we're gonna to wanna to make the cope cut on the right side of the board so that we can cope it right-handed on the right side of the board. Now here's where we're gonna run into why you wanna cut the baseboard upside down. Now, you gotta remember, a lot of guys don't run sliders. They don't run sliding miter saws. Many guys prefer to run a fixed miter saw. So you're not gonna get that extra horizontal capacity. Now I need to put a 45 degree cut on the right side of my board. I just made that cut with the baseboard in the normal position as it will be nailed onto the wall with the profile on top. Now, only about the, the top three quarters of an inch has profile on this baseboard. I've got this big old piece right here that's perfectly straight. Why would I want to put forth effort cutting that with a handheld coping saw whenever I've got a miter saw right here? Now the problem is, if I've got a fixed saw, I can't cut that straight cut as it sits right now. I'd have to flip the board around 
in order to cut down across that straight line. So here's the advantage to cutting your baseboard upside down. If you cut the baseboard with the profile on the bottom, you make your 45 degree cut for your cope. And again, we're thinking of a non-slider miter saw here. Now I have access to this whole straight line and I can make that cut with my miter saw. So that piece will then break away and I've only got the very top here to cope by hand. And that is why you want to cut your base vertically and upside down. So like with anything in carpentry, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. And you certainly can still cope the baseboard in the normal position as it would sit on the wall, making your 45 degree cut. If you have the sliding miter saw capacity and I wanted to make that straight cut, I can cut my 45, I can bring the saw back to zero and then just set it down right here and use the sliding function of the miter saw to make that cut. However, that does involve moving things around a bit much. And in general, it's a little bit easier to just make the 45 degree cut, slide the piece down and make my square cut. Also, for those of you guys who do like to put like a five degree back cut on this, so you're sure that it's sitting nice and tight, uh, it's a lot easier to do that in the vertical position again than trying to put it on the flat and mess around with the bevel function, tilting the saw like that. For me personally, just being completely real and honest, I'm installing paint grade trim and I've never felt the need to put a five degree back cut on this straight portion of the baseboard profile. I feel like I'm getting things plenty tight, just cutting that at zero degrees and it works just fine for me. Another important note is again, whenever you're cutting it upside down, our cope area of the profile is gonna be at the bottom. That means whenever you flip it down and put it flat to cope it, it's gonna put that cope area right at the front where it's gonna be easy to work with, as opposed to if I'm cutting it in the normal orientation and I'm gonna be coping the top edge, then I bring it down. Now the cope area is up on the front edge and it's a little harder to access. So that's another reason for cutting it upside down is because whenever you bring it down flat, that cope area is gonna be on the front edge where it's easy to access. Now, I know I started the video off by saying that we will get more accurate cuts by using the base of the miter saw and the length of our wings as our frame of reference whenever we're cutting vertically because that's gonna better represent how the piece is gonna sit on the floor because we're stretching it out over a much larger area. Don't take that to mean that you can't cut pieces flat and use your miter saw fences as your frame of reference. Many times as I'm cutting, I'm flipping back and forth, especially on my straight cuts. Sometimes it's just easier to let it lay flat and make my cut that way with the slider versus holding it vertically. That's fine, it's still gonna be fine. I'm just making a point that as a general rule, whenever you have an eight foot frame of reference, it's gonna be more accurate than a 12 inch frame of reference when you're dealing with imperfect material that has uh, crowns and whatnot in it and it's not straight. Now one note, cause I get asked this in almost every video where I show my miter saw, I do have auxiliary fences on the miter saw. In order to cut a lot of baseboard in the vertical position, you're going to need to have taller auxiliary fences on your miter saw. So these can be purchased. And this is just an, a piece of aluminum, nice and tall, nice and thin, doesn't have a big buildup. And they come pre-drilled for your miter saw and you can just mount it right on your existing wings. And they're really easy to take on and off. I always try and put links to the products that I'm using in the video notes so that you can find these products. A lot of the links I put in those notes are affiliate links and purchasing through those helps support the channel. In this case, these fences are not affiliate links. It's just a company I appreciate that makes a great product. 
um, for your miter saw. So if you wanna purchase these, you can find the link there. So then one more piece of confusing information. Since we're going to be going clockwise around our room and taking measurements, my, I'm taking my measurement and I'm noting which side of the board is gonna have my straight cut and which side is gonna have my cope. So as I go around clockwise, my cope, my C on my cut list is gonna be on the left side of my number. If you're cutting your, your material upside down, everything switches and becomes opposite. So on my cut list, if I turn my baseboard upside down, whenever I'm making my cut, if I have a C on the left side of the number, that's actually on the right side of my board as I cut it upside down on the miter saw. So just remember whenever you're cutting, it's very simple, just everything is opposite. If it's upside down, it's opposite. So if I've got noted outside miter on the right side of my board on my cut list, whenever I'm cutting it upside down, that's actually gonna be on the left, left side. Hope that wasn't too confusing, but once you do it, you'll get it. It's actually really simple. So this is what a typical uh, floor usually looks like after I'm done cutting. I cut an entire level all at once. Again, whenever you're making your cut list, let's go over here to these rooms. A little more light might be a little bit easier to see. But as I walk into a room to take measurements, again, we're going clockwise. So your cope is always gonna be on the left side so you can see on my notes, the C is usually on the left, and then the S meaning straight cut is on the right. And we'll just go around the room clockwise and take measurements. So taking measurements clockwise is important because we always wanna have that straight end butting into the wall and then the coped end on the left sliding that into place. And since we're cutting upside down on the miter saw, coping on the right hand side that means the coped end is going to be on the left side so again if you're cutting it normal you would switch your directions and you would take your measurement going around the right side going counterclockwise so as always guys thanks for watching hopefully you've found it helpful to learn why it is often more effective to cut base vertically versus flat and why we production carpenters often cut our baseboard upside down so if you've got any questions, you can always drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. You can support by purchasing tools through the affiliate links. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.